In this video, we will be looking at some specific elements of data modeling and some conventions that should be followed while modeling entities, attributes, identifiers, and relationships. Data modeling, as we are aware of by now, is a way to model data through the use of certain signifiers. It allows us to determine and plan for how data should be stored in the database and the structure that relationships between various elements of data should have. Data models are a graphical representation of a database and their goal is to communicate a database design. Data models can be used to communicate between business people and technical developers and among individuals with differing levels of experience. They have a precision to them as they have rules that remove ambiguity and provide great precision. The goal of a data model is to identify the facts that are to be stored in a database. The modeling of data requires communication between the client and the data analyst, and as such requires a partnership between them. Since that data model is a living working document, it requires that the client and analyst communicate iteratively over it and have frank and honest discussions about the organizational structure, rules, and concepts that are to be represented in the data model. Data models are progressively refined so that there is no such thing as a final data model. It is a document that changes with changing business and the organizational environment. The building blocks of a data model are the entity or the thing about which we wish data to be stored. This is the fundamental building block of all data models. Entities have attributes that describe the entity. An entity can have several attributes and each entity is singular or unique within the model. That means that no two attributes of an entity contain the same information and every attribute describes something different about the entity. An attribute that can be used to uniquely distinguish every instance of an entity is referred to as an identifier, and in some cases, attributes are joined together to create identifiers. And finally, relationships are used to describe the linkage between two entities. There are several types of relationships that can exist between entities, such as one is to one, one is to many, and many is to many. The quality of a data model is very important, and there are two concepts that are associated with the quality of data models. Data models should be well-formed, and data models should have high fidelity. A well-formed data model implies that all the construction rules for a data model are obeyed. There is no ambiguity about the names of entities, attributes, relationships, and identifiers. The names of entities, attributes, relationships, and identifiers are supposed to be meaningful to the client and should accurately depict or describe what they are supposed to represent. A high fidelity data model faithfully describes the world it is supposed to represent. The relationships that are described by the data model are of the correct degree, which means that one-to-many relationships describe exactly what they're supposed to represent. Uh, so do one is to one or many is to many relationships. The data model is supposed to be complete and understandable and accurate and is supposed to faithfully describe all of the complexity of uh, the world that the data model is supposed to represent. And finally, the data model is supposed to make sense to the client. If one wants to improve the quality of a data model, one should check whether the level of data detail captured in the data model is correct, whether all exceptions in the organizational data environment are handled, and is the data model accurate. One example of a simple data model is the geography 
or pure geography representing the relationships between nations. The administrative units are the parts of a nation, such as states, and the cities or towns that are captured are present within a state. And so we have three entities over here, nation, administrative unit, and city. A nation has many administrative units or states, and an administrative unit has many cities as part of it. The one-to-one -one relationship between city and nation capture information about the capital of the nation and the capital of the administrative unit. Foreign keys related to city name are present in the nation entity and the administrative unit entity representing the capitals of the nation and the state. However, one does need to consider the question whether a nation can have more than one capital and whether a city can be the capital of more than one state. In fact, there are several examples of this. In South Africa, for instance, there are multiple capitals. Bolivia, for instance, also has multiple capitals. States in India, like Jammu and Kashmir, and Andhra Pradesh or Telangana have many cities as the capital. Jammu and Kashmir, for instance, has two cities that are the capital of one state. And for Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, one city is the capital of more than one state. Consequently, the geography data model changes to this where a nation can have more than one city as its capital and some cities are the capital for multiple states. Here we consider a marriage family relationship between a man and a woman. Here we have two entities with attributes such as ID, job and name for both entities. A one-to-one -one relationship exists between these two entities since one man is married to one woman. The one-to-one -one relationship is labeled husband and wife as one-to-one -one relationships should be. Suppose we were to add marriage data to this data model, where would we add this attribute? Would we place it in both entities? Would there be a replication of data taking place? In fact, if we look at the entities, they seem to have the same information about two different people. So we should ask if the entities can be combined. And we can see that they in fact can be combined. After combining the entities, we have a singular person entity with a recursive one-to-one -one relationship. The relationship is named, and we have a generalized uh, version of the label called spouse. We can also add gender to signify the man or the woman of the entity instances. But this is not truly representative of real life. In modern uh, familial situations, there are in fact multiple marriages and so the entity does not have a one-to-one -one relationship with itself but in fact has a many-to-many -many relationship with itself. A many-to-many -many relationship can be decomposed into two one-to-many relationships with a second entity called a marriage. The marriage entity itself has a start and an end date, as people can have multiple marriages. Please note that the use of the crow's foot on the many ends of the relationship, this tells us that the marriage entity has an identifier that is a composite primary key based on the IDs of the two people getting married and the start date of the marriage. If there is no begin date, we can start to use a marriage number as an identifier uh, to the composite primary key, indicating uh, we can also add marriage status indicating the state of the marriage. If we were to think about children that are the result of a marriage. We can add another relationship called child uh, that is related to the person entity indicating the people that are the result of a marriage. 
this data model can be further complicated once we think about other types of familial relationships. We can find other examples of such entities and relationships. For instance, in a library context, books are lent to several borrowers, and borrowers can have several books. However, the book is not a physical thing. What's in fact borrowed is a copy of the book. And as such, you can have a book conceptualized as having many copies, and it is those copies that are checked out by borrowers. One of the entity relationships you might find is several entities joined by several associative entities. In this case, aircraft, agent, and airline have many-to-many -many relationships amongst themselves. In such a case, this can be simplified by creating one associative entity that holds the primary keys of aircraft, agent, and airline together as a composite primary key. In this case, the plus sign at the end of the crow's foot indicates that these are identifying relationships and the primary key of lease is aircraft code, agent ID, airplane name, and start date together. There are a variety of other examples one can look at, including uh, examples having to do with call statistics that represent the complexity of a golf competition. This is a data model related to projects and the assignment of employees to different projects and the work that they do in the projects. One can get some practice by building a data model about a cinema theater. Please go ahead and try to build this data model up using MySQL Workbench when one has the time.